Hey everyone, it's Tom Kradza, and can we use some economic indicators to try to predict what might happen in the economy so that we can prepare for it ourselves? And that's what my brother Nick and I are always trying to do for ourselves. We're trying to do our own analysis on what might happen in the economy so we can prepare for ourselves, our families, our businesses, our real estate, everything. So last time in a video that we shared this stuff, we just kind of mapped out the different indicators and we kind of wrote them out and we have the ones that we like the most right now that we think might give us the greatest in insight into what might happen next. And then we have more indicators. We actually have many more than these, but these indicators are things that we would look at more specifically perhaps for the real estate market. So right here, I'm going to focus on the top five indicators. And if you want a worksheet, for these that are mapped out, we kind of printed something off for you. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to grab a PDF version of some of these indicators so you can kind of map this stuff out. So the top five indicators are here. They're, they are the velocity of money, which and the velocity of money is the movement of money in the economy. So in a debt-based money system, you really want money to be moving in an economy for the economy to grow. You need economic growth. The central bankers, they want economic growth because without economic growth, the debt level looks bigger if revenues or the economic activity start to decrease. So you want, or they want, because I don't personally mind which way this happens, but they want the economy to increase, the velocity of money to increase and grow so the debt levels look less as the economy kind of grows. So the velocity of money is really important, especially to the central bankers. There's interest rates, debt levels, employment, and lending standards. And the way we did this is we broke this out into three time categories. And the reason that we did that is we want to analyze what's happened over the last 10 years because things have been very consistent over the last 10 years. And we want to see what might happen next. And the next time category I have is just the next six to 12 months. Because with everything happening so quickly right now and the economy going through such a big shock, we think the next six to 12 months might be unique in and of itself. So we wanna break that period out separately and that's just how we're choosing to look at this. And then we broke out the next 10 years. So we have the last 10 years, the next six to 12 months, and then the next 10 years. And the reason that we have the next 10 years set out to the side here is we wanna see or try to anticipate what the policy changes might be that the central banks, so the Bank of Canada, the Federal Reserve, central banks all around the world, and the government do. So what the monetary policy is gonna look like and what the fiscal policy is gonna look like over the next 10 years. So if we map this out, if we go through these time periods together, we can kind of get an idea of what might be happening if our own analysis is somewhat accurate. So. Here's how we look at things. Over the last 10 years, we have the velocity of money coming down. So the velocity of money, if you go to the St. Louis Federal Reserve velocity of money chart, you can see it's been trending down, pretty obvious. Interest rates, we have decreasing, and interest rates did kind of creep up a little bit over the last 10 years, quarter point here, quarter point there, but historically, super low, like really, really low. So we have interest rates trending down over the last 10 years. Debt levels, we have debt levels that were definitely creeping up. The reason we don't have it straight up is that at the beginning of this last 10 year window, corporate America, corporations, and the reason I'm discussing America even though we're here in Canada is what happens to them will often dictate what happens to us here in Canada. And corporate America was not completely over indebted as it has become. So I, I don't have it straight up, I have it just kind of trending up. At the, to save Wall Street in 2008, definitely the government got itself into a lot of debt, but corporate America really started laying on some debt just in the last four or five years. So I have that trending up. Employment was definitely trending up. There were jobs, I mean, we can all talk about the quality of those jobs and the, the income level of different jobs, but overall employment was trending up. Lending standards we have straight down, and the reason that we have them straight down is that the banks were lending. If you had the criteria that they were looking for, you had the employment, you know, and, and you had the required income and your debt ratios were accurate, they were going to lend to you. There was lots of different programs um, available. So lending standards we have straight down. So now if we look and compare the last 10 years to the next six or 12 months, we can map this out a little bit. Velocity of money over here, instead of trending down, we have straight down. We straight down. When the economy just completely closes like it has for the last couple months, there's no movement of money. So that's not a big stretch. Velocity of money straight down. Um, interest rates, and we have interest rates going up, which might sound weird, especially since the Bank of Canada cut rates by 1.5%. Um, the reason we have them up is we're talking about real interest rates, and real interest rates are whatever the interest rates are, so, so the nominal rates, minus inflation. So if the Bank of Canada's overnight lending rate is 0.25, which is what it is right now, 
and inflation comes in as a negative number, which it just came in in Canada as a negative number. I think it was negative 0.2, the April number. Don't hold me to that, but I think that's what it was. If you have inflation as a negative number and you're supposed to subtract inflation from rates, well then you're, you know, when you subtract a negative, you're actually adding. So rates, real rates, are going up and central bankers at a time they want the velocity to, of money to increase and they want money to flow into the economy this is their worst nightmare so real rates are weirdly trending up which is completely strange so debt levels um, we have through the moon so straight up so debt levels with everything that canada has done canada i can't even find the latest budget numbers here in canada their money is going out the door so fast i'm not sure anyone knows um, if anyone has that, please feel free to share. Um, and obviously in the US with trillions of dollars being spent. So debt levels straight up, employment straight down. And the reason for that I think is pretty obvious. The economy has shut down. Um, the jobs are not around. The US I think is 20 million or so um, is the uh, latest stat on, on the amount of people unemployed. So in, in Canada, we don't have that accurate data just yet. Um, but I don't think that's a stretch to say employment straight down and lending standards. And this is the one I'm probably the most hesitant about, but lending standards we have going up. And the reason for that is we're hearing things and not officially, we're just hearing things from different, different uh, contacts that we have in the banks, that there are different um, positions like risk managers that now exist, that they always did this kind of stuff in the Canadian banking system. But apparently now if you're self-employed and going for a mortgage, there's somebody extra or a new role or different that is going to analyze the file to make sure the underwriter is good to approve it. So when you have things like that entering into the banking system, to us that means lending standards are getting tighter or increasing. The banks are definitely still willing to lend. I don't want to misrepresent that. The banks are willing to rent, lend, but what I mean by this is there's definitely a few more hurdles that we're all having to jump through when it comes to lending. So I have lending standards going up. This one I think is a little debatable, but that's, that's where I have it. So now, over the, from the last 10 years, if the indicators look like this, and then I've mapped out what I think the next six or 12 months might look like, I, I can just take a little marker or a pen, I can circle the ones that are different. And in this analysis, every single one is different than the previous 10 years. Every single one. And usually when we've done this for ourselves over the last 10 years at different intervals, we haven't seen it where like every single primary indicator that we like looking at at that period is changing as much as it's changed right now. So when we have all the indicators that we like to look at changing, that gives us a clue that the economy is likely going to change. So to us, and what that means, if there's less easy money, less employment, less velocity of money, are we entering a period of deflation? And can the central banks allow that? Can the Bank of Canada allow that? They, they don't want deflation. Their stated goal, the Bank of Canada's stated goal on the Bank of Canada.ca, Bank of Canada.ca, is that they are looking for inflation. That is their whole mandate that they're looking for inflation. So if this would signal to us that deflation is coming in, the latest inflation number in Canada is negative, which kind of almost proves that deflation is here. What is the policy response going to be? And that's why we have the next 10 years mapped out because we think there has to be some sort of monetary and fiscal policy response because in a debt based money system, the central banks do not want deflation. So if I map out the next 10 years on all these categories, you can see on velocity of money, instead of going down, I have it going up because I believe the, the banks are going to have to convince us to spend money. And to us, that means they're going to have to change human psychology and get us all to believe that inflation is coming so that you don't want to hold on to any money that you have. You want to spend it. So it'll, it's really going to be interesting to see if they can pull this off. So I'm not sure if that's going to be actually true that they can, but that's what we believe they want. And that's why I've put that there. So the next thing is real interest rates I have coming down because they need them to come down. And if that means they the bank of Canada goes negative so that they can pull the rates lower, the real rates lower. I think we might be headed to negative rates here in Canada in some capacity. So again, we're just making our own guess and our own analysis on this. So interest rates lower, um, debt levels over here um, will stay high. We believe, sorry, I'm tripping over some cords here. Um, employment, instead of straight down as it's been, as the economy opens up and starts to gather up some steam again, we believe employment will at least trend back up. It's not gonna be like as low as it was. 
Um, and lending standards. This one's interesting because if we believe that lending standards has tightened up right now or, and will continue to, and the reason again that we think it will continue to is the banks aren't going to want to lend into an economy that they're uncertain of. So if they're not certain about the economy, they're going to just be a little, we feel a little tighter with their lending, but who knows? We, we could be off on this one, but we have it there. But we believe the government's going to have to come in at some point and tell the banks, hey, lend. We need the economy to have more money in it. You need to lend. Don't sit on your bank reserves. Lend the money into the economy. That's why we think there's going to be this most awesome, I can't tell you how excited we are about this because there's going to be this awesome battle between the government and the banking system where the government, I assume, is going to try and backstop more stuff so the banks feel like they're comfortable in lending. So we're really going to see what happens here, but we believe the lending standards somehow have to come down. So, and, and again, all of this stuff, we don't even agree with all of the actions that the government and the Bank of Canada, the US Federal Reserve is going to take. We're just trying to anticipate them so we can prepare for them, that's all. So if these indicators change, and now I've, I've, I've put little circles around the, uh, the ones that are changing, now four of the five have the possibility of changing again in maybe the next six months, 12 months, 18 months, whatever that window would be. And then I think that would carry forward for the next few years. So now we have an economy that was like this, is changing pretty greatly, and then might change again with the policy response to this middle, middle window here. So that allows us to do some preparation because if I feel like deflation's coming in, then cash is king. And I should keep liquid, liquid reserves. Cash is gonna be king in, an, in a deflation environment. Right? It's also, when everybody hoards cash, it's also gonna you know, encourage the velocity of money to go down further. So it's just a really interesting time. But then if the policy response is going to be an attempt at inflation, I need to also prepare for inflation because I don't know how long this window is gonna hold and maybe we get the inflation, maybe we get it sooner than I think, maybe we get it a little longer than we think, but for myself and my family and my brother and our businesses and our real estate, we need to at least plan for it. So now we're in this state that we need to plan for deflation where cash is king, but we also need to plan for inflation where durable goods or hard assets, especially income producing assets are good. So we're in this environment where we, need, we believe we need to plan for deflation and inflation simultaneously. So that's kind of our little take on this kind of stuff. And obviously we can have a much longer discussion on this stuff and you can choose different indicators and choose your own analysis on this. If you want a worksheet for yourself to play around with this stuff, there's a link in the description of this video where you can get that. I think that's it. We'll leave it at that for now. Hopefully you find some of that interesting until next time, your life, your terms.